So this is courtesy of Vogue. This is a courtesy of Vogue. It says, oh, let me get the screen up on here. Bear with me a second. Apologies here. It says, courtesy of Vogue. It says, Palace founder on his new role as creative director of Fila Plus. So this is courtesy of Vogue. Really big news regarding Fila. It says, another day, another new creative director. And... and <laughs> I thought it said dictatorship. Okay, directorship. Okay, my bad. I thought it said dictatorship. Another day, another new creative di di directorship in fashion. And we predict this new recruit might be among the most inspired hires of 2024. Following 15 years of building his London skate um, startup palace into one of the most recognizable and rascally brands in, in streetwear, um, taking on the surprising side hustle today, he's been named as creative director of the 130 f 113 year old italian sportswear brand feeler um for the new elevated offshoot feeler plus in a statement issued this morning feeler global brand president todd klein we are thrilled to welcome him as creative director of feeler plus his forward-thinking approach is aligned with our mission and innovative innovative while honoring feeler's legacy as a premium sportswear brand um the owner of palace says that he's been offered the creative roles before and done a little under under the line in consulting this is the first offer that he intrigued him enough to buy it he says at feeler archive i was really inspired there were so many things about the brand i didn't know about it's incredible i love sportswear i love making clothes and i feel like really comfortable and the people interested in the brand so i thought okay great um the, the diving in dividing time between london will be running palace um the, the, and home of Felix in Milan. There'll be a show to be shown to buyers next week. Really, there's already it's already been designed. Then it'll be sh this will be shown to buyers in Paris next weekend. God damn, it's already been done. Um, sorry, for, no, what was I saying? Felix Plus Studio for the last five months has shaped the debut collection. Um, the plan is to distribute the collection across e-commerce partners, department stores, and selected um brand boutiques. Um, one indicates one indication of Fila's confidence in a new offshoot which is being produced in Milan's 247 group is that it was signed off on a newly updated version of the F-Box logo originally designed by Sergio Privitera or Privitera back in 1973 I'm assuming that's that new logo there right with the green and red there um, it says here for me Italy stands for all things stylish and I want Fila's rich Italian heritage to be at the heart of Fila Plus working with distribute with working to distribute through a wholesale model instead of direct to consumer really there's not going to be direct to consumer it's going to be sold wholesale that's a bit dumb isn't it hmm something new for the calendar the pros the presentation process in Paris next week is completely different and not something I've done before that's exciting I'm learning Fila Plus is conceived as a progressive heritage brand looking back to the step forward and has 113 years of heritage I've always designed by exploring things that I just really like touching on the old and bringing something new I'm also very excited about the opportunity um, to do footwear I'm updating doing some odd modern takes on certain things this presented with an abundance of material to riff on like the tracksuit silhouette um, one icon to, uh, he considered while shaping his debut is George Michael. I couldn't believe how much Fila popped up in watching Wham documentary. So with this, going back to my English roots, Fila sports um, affiliation, Grant Hill, Ferrari, Swedish tennis player, blah, 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 blah. Um, performance serves as inspiration. One focus, he says, with White Rock Mountaineering Range was designed by Fila and Pierluigi Orlando. Um, watching the archive videos is amazing to realize how much of the archive he did of the sport. Um, he said that there will be in the current no current plans for a cross to cross pollinate Fila Plus and Palace. Um, but he added that he has de de sorry he added that he has dedicated parallels between the two. A lot of the advertising from the nineties reminded me of what we do, and there's a lot of humor in that. And I recognize it. I designed both the idea of the collection and the way in which I would see it marketed. Um, I'm the dedicated and gnarly customer. I love clothes and the things that I, other people make, but also my taste and the direction I tend to go in bold and a bit funny. Clothes are important. I love them, but I want to be having fun doing it. So far, it's been great. The people here are friendly. I just being love being in Italy is something I really enjoy doing a lot. So interested to see how this develops. But again, um, just to kind of put out, I think that's some archive footage here to so see some bits and pieces. Um, it's going to be dropping sometime next week, I guess they're saying here. So let's continue and kind of give my kind of um, you know review. So um, I've no, I've made no secret about how much I fucking hate Palace, right? I detest the brand for because of my one fucking measly experience bumping into the founder themselves and think he's a bit of a cunt. And I've never worn the brand since then. So my bias and my um my hate for the brand to one side, this is a really good this is a really good hire. No, 
no word of a lie. This is a really good hire. Um, Fila has been languaging and suffering and dead for a while, the same way that Reebok has, the same way that Umbro has been in terms of sportswear. No one's really checking for Fila in any may in any really meaningful way. They might be able to drop a couple of retros here and there that kind of galvanize people, that kind of spark interest. Um, the first thing that I think of when it comes to Fila and what they've done in recent years, I can think of was maybe a collaboration with Gosha Rojinski. I don't know if you guys remember him, but he did a couple of pieces when he was um out here kind of pushing his stuff and whatnot and that kind of was like a big thing and that kind of brought Fila back for a while and then the other thing that I remember Fila being um kind of back in the culture and spoken about highly was the disruptor shoe I don't know if you guys remember that that disruptor shoe that was popping around like what 2017 2018 19 I don't really sure what year it was but there was a period in time where every hipster girl in London especially Italian and Spanish girls loved this fucking Fila disruptor one of the worst Worst, probably one of the most ugliest shoes ever known to man but somehow this fucking shoe kind of you know caught the imagination of young um girlies in london or major major cities um within the western europe or western world and they seem to fucking love these but apart from this no one else really kind of speaks about feeler which is really unfortunate because if you think about feeler and you think about their rich history the fact that they're obviously a hundred plus year old sportswear brand the fact that they have an incredible archive of stuff they have uh, loads of history within basketball they have loads of history within running they have loads of history within sports where there's obviously the tennis angle um what else i was thinking about there's obviously the the the, the era i can think of around maybe like the 90s and stuff when i forgot what the genre is called but there was a particular kind of brand of electronic music in spain I wish I can remember the name of it. It's really fast. The tempo is like 140 BPM or something. Or maybe it's kind of in Valencia or something. But there was an era around that time where that music was really popular. And a lot of the kids in that scene would wear a lot of feeler. Track suits, whatever it may be, shoes, t-shirts, hats, all that good stuff. So there's a lot of ties with feeler when it comes to that 90s rave kind of dance scene and whatnot. Sportswear, tennis, um, obviously rock climbing and outdoor ACG type of stuff. There's a lot of archive things in that. So I'm pretty sure if you go into the archives at feeler and you really dig through and you have the ability to kind of, you know, open the fucking library over there and kind of pour open and pour over all the books and the old fucking catalogs and videos and advertising bits and pieces you could actually put together a really good collection and considering feel is coming from doing absolutely nothing in the last few years he doesn't need to do much you know the the kind of scope to be a success at feeler isn't that you know it, it, it's not that difficult of a job to not get right because they've been languishing in a state of irrelevancy for a while so if you're able to put together a decent set of tracksuits a decent collection sort of tracksuits a decent jacket uh you know some some decent footwear comes out from it it's going to completely galvanize and revive that brand um you know easily so i can definitely understand what's happening and this also makes sense as well because recently i felt like Again, I don't really check for Palace stuff anymore anyway, but the stuff that I have seen, especially the collaborations, has felt really tired and really boring and really in uninspired. So maybe if you are a fan of the brand, this is actually a good thing because this might actually get them to be a little bit more inspired. It might kind of spark a bit of creativity in them to try and kind of revive the brand and bring it back into some level of relevancy again because they've kind of suffered because of maybe of their success maybe because their expectation level i'm not really too sure but it hasn't necessarily been the same as it was in the past so i think if anything again my hate for the brand itself to one side um i do think this is a really good appointment and i think it will be a success if anything it's a real shame that they had to you know they couldn't just figure it out themselves it kind of shows you just how clueless a lot of these brands and these big companies are even though they have all this rich history you know they've been in the game for a while they don't really know what to do and how to kind of you know um, tap into the current zeitgeist and talk to the kids and kind of make stuff that people want they just don't know how to do it so maybe if you go out there and you tap into some of the hottest brands out there that have the biggest customer base that know what they're doing maybe they have a better understanding of knowing how to kind of you know take the stuff that you already do and kind of just you know um, highlight it and elevate it 
a certain level because I'm sure most of the stuff that's going to be designed is already stuff that's already existed in their archives and they're just going to you know do some extra touches sprinkle some of their magic on it and then of course represent it in a modern way and then Bob's your uncle Granny's your aunt so I can go from you know the activations to the campaigns to the you know the videos to the marketing material to maybe some of the behind the scenes stuff we'll see it's all going to add to elevate and take Fila onto the next level so I'm definitely sure this will be a success Fila Plus is definitely going to be a success um but you know me with my um you know self-imposed boycott of anything associated with this guy in palace i'm never wearing it but i do think it's going to be a success and it's going to absolutely do really fucking well and if anything this might be a wake-up call for brands like reebok for brands like umbro for brands like puma to get their fucking act together and actually hire somebody Big up, um, also Richie. burberry daniel lee issues a low profit gain due to slow sales due to luxury slow down Maybe it's the prices and designs, Daniel. Not looking good for Barbary. It's sad. Bring Ricardo back and may can't Naomi. <laughs> yeah, I'm. 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 I'm more than happy to see Daniel Lee's demise. I'm not gonna lie because I believe he did say what he said to that young lady during his time at Bottega Veneta about calling her a black bitch or something along those kind of lines. I believe that happened. I don't believe that was a lie. I don't believe that was a rumor made to kind of make him look bad. He's not that important. He's just some random dude that designs clothes. No one fucking knows who he is outside of people that are into fashion. So the idea that people would make up this contrived lie to make him look bad is dumb. I think he did say it, but I think because he's so valuable and he's so quote unquote talented and he had a name, people swept under the rug, which is really annoying because I'm not really for cancelling. I don't really like cancel culture. I think it's fucking lame, but please let the rules or please let the cancel culture rules apply to everybody the same way. If some people don't get cancelled for certain things because they're talented, also let that extend to other people. But it doesn't happen that way. Um, they kind of bend the rules and make exceptions and pick and choose for certain people based on who they like. And it's annoying, of course, because other people could never get away with what he gets away with. So he got away with it. Um, he didn't, you know, nothing bad happened to him. And then he basically went for Bottega Veneta, which is odd, isn't it, right? The last two or three collections at Bottega the one that he did in fucking Detroit the one that was hosted in fucking Bergheim were fucking shit absolutely terrible and now we know why because by that time Matteo Blasi had already left uh, Blasi had already left and some other people already left too behind the scenes because no one liked Daniel Lee and didn't like working with him these are white people too by the way not just black people white people that worked with him didn't like working with him and they left that obviously explained why the collections were terrible he fucking got fired or no he got, he got sorry he got let go or fired whatever happened and he walked straight into Burberry. That was like a good wake up call of like, fuck, bro. In fashion, they really do pick and choose, isn't it? They really do pick and choose who they decide, you know, guess what and guess whatever. Because he he was not even deserving of getting that Burberry job. Even though Ricardo Tishi did a terrible job before him, he had no business walking straight into Bottega Veneta doing a poor job there and then walking straight to Burberry. And obviously now the Burberry thing is kind of dying. Um, maybe it's just the prices because I think the clothes are actually quite good. I'm not going to lie. As much as I don't like Daniel Lee as a person, I think the clothes are actually quite good. He's actually designing probably the best he's designed in recent years at Burberry. But the prices are just, they're obscene, bro. The prices make fucking Celine look like Stussy. <laughs> the prices make, sorry, the, the prices make Phoebe Philo stuff look like fucking Stussy. The prices are fucking crazy. And I don't know why they did that. Maybe it was brand positioning. Maybe they went to come in with a big bang and remind people that, hey, we're back. Here's, we're going to price a fucking a trench coat at 10 grand or something. I don't know. But it was a dumb idea. It was a dumb decision to do, man, honestly, because it kind of really sullied the taste of people liking that fucking brand. You know what I mean? It kind of made people like not be that. Because I remember the collection came out. Everyone was hamped. It was, I was pumped, myself included. Then when everyone found out what the prices were, like that fucking duck hat I wanted. That little duck beanie was like three grand or something. It's like, are you having a laugh? You could probably get a dupe of that made by some lady somewhere in a village in England on Etsy for like 50 pounds if you wanted to. You could probably get some woman, some mum somewhere, you could get her to probably knit you that duck beanie, you know, as a dupe, you know, made with love, right? Made with care with a little handwritten note sent to you from Etsy for way cheaper than that. So I don't know, man. I don't know. What do I know? I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways.